Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And you're going to hear a little fan noise in the background. My apologies, but I don't think you want to see me sweat. So, just put up with a little bit of noise. And today we're going to talk about something that a lot of people mention. They wonder why they can't hear the voice of God very clearly. And I title this in the book, Still Small Voice. Many Christians confess that they find it difficult to hear God's voice. They say that they barely hear his shout and they rarely, if ever, hear his whisper. They feel that they are in a soundproof booth carrying out a conversation with someone who doesn't seem very interested in answering back. When they hear glowing testimonies from other believers who receive clear direction from God, they feel defeated. But if I can be a little bit blunt here, if we want to hear from God, we must remove our spiritual earbuds and we must set aside our favorite playlists. Many of us only read certain authors' books. We use the same devotional material year after year. We always listen to the same style of music. We focus only on the same Bible passages. We want to discover new facets of God's personality, but we are reluctant to move out of our comfort zone in order to do so. There might be an adjustment period once we remove those spiritual earbuds. We'll need to train our ears to recognize the voice of our Heavenly Father so we can filter out anything that is not from Him. Training our ears to hear will take discipline in our quiet times, especially in Bible reading. It is tempting to just read the good stuff and read the difficult passages some other time, only that some other time never comes into time. However, we need an overall view of the Bible in order for us to recognize the Savior's voice in the midst of so many other voices competing for our attention. I was once a preschool teacher of a class of nine children between the ages of two and five. I quickly learned that my voice was not loud enough to carry above the din of the classroom. I needed to communicate in such a way that each child would hear my voice even during the very noisy free playtime periods. Thus began the whisper game which quickly became one of our favorite games to play. I started by asking the children to sit quietly in a row. I stayed close by, whispering fun commands to each child. Jump five times on one foot. Tap your nose. I gradually moved a little bit further away, still with the quiet tone of voice. The children eagerly met the challenge. I upped the ante and asked the other children to clap or to count out loud as I whispered a command to their classmates. This required an intense amount of concentration, but the children surpassed my expectations. After only a couple of weeks of playing our game, I noticed my students' ability to hear my voice in the classroom and even on the playground increased dramatically. Here's a prayer by A. W. Tozer. Lord, teach me to listen. The times are noisy and my ears are weary with the thousand raucous sounds which continuously assault them. Give me the spirit of the boy Samuel when he said to thee, Speak, for thy servant heareth. 
Let me hear thee speaking to my heart. Let me get used to the sound of your voice, that its tones may be familiar when the sounds of earth die away, and the only sound will be the music of thy speaking. And that's from Pursuit of God. And you can get that for free online. In the same way that my little preschoolers learn to enjoy the challenge of listening to my voice, become childlike yourself and ask the Lord to play a game. If you're trying to figure out how to hear the voice of God, be aware that the Lord is going to be speaking to you. He's always speaking to us, but so often we dismiss those little small inklings going on in our lives because immediately something else comes in to get our attention. So start listening to the undertones in your life, the quietness, those tiny little nudges because God could be inviting you into playing a whisper game of your own.